skin, Big Bandish. Hello, Perfect Beauties. My name is Daisy. I am the CEO and founder of Vanish. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about why I wasn't happy with my life and just something I have learned in happiness and something I've learned with life, why people aren't happy and just the success and achiever myth. So all my life, I don't know if you guys know my story, but when I was younger, I grew up really poor. I looked different from everybody else. I was judged by the way I looked and I was judged because I didn't have certain items that um, my peers did. So I wore the same clothes every day from Goodwill. My family was very poor and um, I was considered ugly because I was the only Asian person in my school. And so ever since a young kid, I vowed that I would never be in a position where I would feel poor, where I would feel ugly, where I would feel not respected or cared about because I didn't have X, Y, and Z. And I firmly believe that if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't have been as ambitious as I am now because sometimes I feel like what drives me and what pushes me to work so hard can only be explained by my fear of going back to that time when you know nobody would want to talk to you nobody would want to hear your opinion where you would feel ignored and i felt like all my life if i was beautiful enough and if i had you know clear skin because i had acne growing up if i was rich enough and successful enough that people would respect me and nobody would ever ignore me and nobody would ever leave me out because i was respected so all my life i have been setting goals and setting very very high goals to achieve and i have been very successful at it i consider my best strength is once i set my mind to something i can accomplish it and it was always in my head if i accomplished a b and c then i would feel x y and z so one of the you know the first things was you know if i get clear skin if my skin clears up, if I don't have acne and the acne scarring, then people are going to like me, then I will be beautiful, then, you know, I will be um, respected because, you know, people are going to want to get to know me because people want to get to know people with clear skin versus people with like a ton of acne on their face. Another thing for me was always if I, um, I remember it was like if I get contacts because I had glasses when I was younger if I get contacts and I don't wear glasses then people will perceive me as more beautiful people will perceive me as this this is that another thing was if I grew my hair long um, and I had long hair I would be considered more feminine people wouldn't be questioning whether I was a boy or a girl because people did when I was younger because I was so androgynous and not stylish. It was always like if I did this then people would perceive me as that and therefore I would feel more of a sense of belonging and I think all throughout my entire life I have wanted to feel like I matter and that I've wanted to feel like I belong so I've always set these goals to myself of I need to feel like I belong in something and so that's why I set such high goals. Even for college it was like I need to get into this college um, even in college, I was like, I need to get this GPA, I need to get this job, I need to get all these things so that people will like me and so that people will respect me. And I never ever wanted to feel left out because I wasn't good enough because in a, as a young person, as a young kid, I always felt like left out because I wasn't good enough. So I never ever wanted to go back. And so what really drives me, even to this day, is achieving something and achieving X, Y, and Z so I can feel respected, um, loved, and belonged into something. Recently, I was looking um, into my life and thinking that, wow, Daisy, you literally have everything that you could have ever wanted and you are not happy. And it was just this weird revelation and realization because the older you get, the faster time goes by. I realized that I had achieved everything on this vision board 
that I wanted. I had done everything that anybody my age could have done. I, I, I mean, honestly, like, the stuff I'm complaining about is the stuff 0.0000001% of the population is even fortunate enough to be complaining about. But, you know, I, I had, you know, I had a nice home. I had an amazing support group. I had come from an amazing family. I have great relationship. I have, I am more successful than 99% of my peers. You know, I have a nice car. I, I can travel the world and I've traveled to maybe, you know, 39 countries like I literally had anything that anybody wanted. I had clear skin, you know, I am beautiful. I am skinny um, I wear a size, you know, two to four in Lululemon leggings like I just I felt like I had everything that I could have ever wanted and everything that anybody could have ever wanted and I was there and I was like I am still not happy and it was the weirdest experience ever because you would think anybody looking from the outside looking at my life you would think that I would be so privileged and I would be so happy and I would never have anything to worry about and if you were to look at somebody completely opposite of me you might think that they would be way unhappier than I was but in reality I felt just as unhappy as any unhappy person and I think the reason why I was so unhappy was I realized all the stuff that I had worked for, everything that I worked for, it didn't really matter because when I worked for whatever it was that I worked for, I realized there would be a lot more issues along the way and that my issues and my insecurities and my feelings of self-doubt and longing to belong were still not solved and still there. No matter how beautiful I would become, no matter how much makeup I would put on my face or, you know, whatever I would want to get done or however I wanted to dress, no matter how much money I made or what kind of status symbols I had, I still felt like I didn't belong. Like it's crazy because I did everything in my power to make sure I would belong and even then I still felt like I wasn't belonging like I mentioned in my previous videos when I went to a lot of the CEO conferences I realized I was the only girl under 30 and Asian there right and I still had those feelings of not belonging even when I was hanging out with my like old girlfriend groups I still felt like I didn't belong I still felt very very different even though you know I can dress up and play that part of a beautiful girl with the makeup and you know the fake eyelashes and you know high heels I still felt so awkward and so weird and that you know people were just objectifying me and I realized like wow DZ everything that you've ever wanted you have and now you don't really care for it anymore so what's the point of achieving all these things it's weird because I think, um, you know, they say after you make 50000 or 40000 or whatever, however much per year in the United States, that the level of happiness doesn't increase. And I can completely relate to that because I have found that with more money comes a lot of more stress. And there's just been so much stress, I guess, mm -hmm in my life because I think about how much money I am spending on certain things to grow the business or just, you know, the more money you have, the more money it takes to maintain what you have and it just takes a lot of money to keep a certain standard of living or keep a certain business afloat. So for example, for Banish, we new product development and I had never realized how expensive it is or it was to manufacture really from scratch a custom product and but in order to keep banish growing we need to invest in these things but the amount of money we're spending you could you know have a down payment for a home somewhere and it's very very stressful because you don't want to basically fuck it up like you don't want to mess up and I see that in people who are very wealthy where they do everything they can to preserve their wealth and they don't want to make a dumb mistake to lose all their money. They don't want to marry somebody in whom they love because they don't want to dilute the family's wealth if they marry down. You know, like there's just so many worries you have and so many issues you have when you do have money 
and it's just stuff that people I think don't think about because they think oh well if I'm rich then all my problems would go away it's the same about being beautiful it's kind of like when I had acne and stuff I wanted a flawless clear skin like no pimples and I looked at some girls and they just their skin was like butter and I was like I was like how how do I get my skin to be like butter you know like how do I get so I have zero pores on my face and zero scars and zero acne spots and then when I'm at this point now I'm like now that my skin is clear up and it's not a hundred percent I'm still wondering I, I freak out now if I see certain things on my face if I see a pimple coming I'm like oh it's gonna leave another scar if my skin is already flawless then I just get so much more worried about getting damage to my skin than if my skin was already just full of pimples anyway would it really matter so there's just this pressure and this stress when you have so much to keep it like that and it's very very stressful and I don't think people understand that it's this race that never never ends and now I understand why you know celebrities are very unhappy whether it's in their marriages or in their careers why you know people who are rich famous and beautiful commit suicide or are depressed because it never ends there's so much more you have to lose with each and every day you are obsessed with making sure that you're not losing anything you know you're obsessed with making sure that you're growing whatever it is that you have and that everything you've done hasn't gone to waste versus if you were just a normal average person and you didn't have much to lose I think you would be a lot happier because you could just be more happy-go-lucky and there wouldn't be so much pressure both internally and externally from everybody wanting to see you either succeed or wanting to see you fail you know and so I really want to tell my audience that having more money doesn't make you more happy being more beautiful doesn't make you more happy um, being thinner also doesn't make you more happy I I had this mindset of wanting to lose a certain amount of weight and I just remember thinking if I can wear these certain clothes then I will be happier because it will fit better on my body and then I thought to myself Daisy who are you trying to impress by being thinner like why does it matter if you're thinner are you happier not necessarily because I was always hungry and miserable that I couldn't like eat whatever I wanted and enjoy like carbs which is something that I absolutely love yeah I might look cuter in like a you know two-piece midi dress or whatever but like the people who care about me when I look thin aren't the people that I want to have in my life, aren't the people who I want to be friends with. And so I just kind of felt like, what was the point of all this? You know, what was, what is the point of trying to achieve and succeed and be this picture perfect person? Because at the end of the day, I'm still unhappy. Even though I have everything that anybody could have wanted, I'm still not happy because I realized that once you get there it's like damn is this all there is Ugh, but I really have suffered and sacrificed everything and now I have to maintain and grow it I can't just leave it right it's either gonna die or it's gonna grow it's not gonna just stay there there's always that pressure constantly 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 I talk about my family a lot and my family is just I love my family so much I love them to pieces but seeing my family sometimes makes me so heartbroken in a way I can't even describe. You know, my dad came to this country with $400 in his pocket and he created a life for him and his family. And you know, now my parents are doing very, very well financially because they've just sacrificed and worked their entire life and worked to the point of suffering to get to where they are now. And my mom is so afraid of spending money that I can't tell her, you know, how much a hotel room costs or how much we spend on a dinner or airline tickets because she just cannot fathom spending, you know, $200 a night on a hotel room. Like to her, she just, she, she can't, she can't understand. She can't understand that concept because you know when she was younger like evening meat was a delicacy because meat was so expensive because you know she grew up in the Chinese Communist Revolution and she's just always so worried about losing everything that she's worked for and losing all the money that she's made I remember the other day we went on a trip and you know you can bring a carry-on right of course she's not gonna check in any bags because she doesn't want to spend the money 
and I opened her bag and in there it was just full of ramen noodles that she brought, that she bought on sale at Costco. And when I saw that, my heart just sank and my heart just broke because we're going on this trip and we're hopefully enjoying the food, but she can't, she doesn't know what it's like to enjoy something. She doesn't know what it's like to try a meal at a place she's traveling to, which she's afraid of, is she's afraid of losing everything that she's worked for, so she brings ramen noodles. Um, you know, a dollar ramen noodles, um, because that's how she's trained to survive. And I do think a huge part of it is she never wants to go back to the poverty that we were in before and so she doesn't know how to enjoy stuff she just accumulates 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 and save 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 saves so that way she never has to go back to that again and i think it really breaks my heart because i look at other people who didn't really grow up in that kind of condition and they don't really understand the meaning of meaning of a dollar, right? And they don't really understand um, how hard it is to make it in America. But then I also wonder, maybe it's better that they don't understand because then they wouldn't be so obsessed with saving every single penny. And maybe they would be able to enjoy a nice meal or enjoy a nice trip without worrying about the finances. And it breaks my heart because I look at my parents and they're still living in the same way they did even though they are in such a different financial status now, they act like they're still making, you know, minimum wage. My mom still acts like she's working at McDonald's and it, it breaks my heart because I think to myself, was it really worth it for you guys to sacrifice everything in order to make it in this country, in order to be where you are now? We sent my brother to college and my brother got into Yale University and he's just so amazing. Like you guys know how much in love with him I am. He's like, you know, division one athlete in track and field. And you know, he like did amazingly on his SATs and all the tests and you know, just like amazing on paper, right? And I just remember he would always be studying and always be working so hard. And I barely got to see him in the last four years. While dropping him off at college, I didn't realize how emotional this experience would be, but I felt such, almost like a sense of sadness during that time because we're dropping him off to college and he's never going to be living under the same roof of like our household family anymore. And he's now going to be going to college, he's gonna be you know, doing internships, having a job, living his own life. And this is like the end, you know, of him regularly having dinner and um, going on weekend trips and going grocery shopping with the family, you know, like it's basically up. And the time I sent him off to college and hugged him, I had this flashback of, uh, of him um, sitting at the kitchen table, me and him sitting at the kitchen table, him eating a huge plate of watermelon on his phone. And I remember saying something and then he made fun of me and I just couldn't stop laughing. And you know, I was laughing for like three minutes straight and then I had to go and I left. And I just realized while dropping him off that like, that's what life is. Like that's really what life is, is those little moments here and there that you don't realize are so important until you realize that you're not gonna have those moments anymore. And I think I became sad after that because I realized that that's really what life is about. It's not about achieving X, Y, and Z and being amazingly beautiful and be having amazingly clear skin or having you know a lot of money or a lot of wealth or a lot of success or all this stuff. It's not about that because at the end of the day, everything ends. Like everything ends and everyone dies and all you have left are those little moments of you and your family, you know, having a laugh or looking into someone's eyes that you love or, you know, just going bike riding and enjoying the wind in your hair, drinking a cup of amazing coffee and just feeling that like, like surround your taste buds, you know, like that's what life is about. Are those just little moments where you just feel so much joy.
and that's it. It's not about the luxury items or the success or whether you know you look amazingly hot in a beautiful dress because you lost 20 pounds like it's not about that and I think I became sad after that because I just realized that shit like so much of my life has been entrapped around achieving all these things and I realized that's not what life is so I've had to really change my purpose and not change my purpose but really focus in on my purpose and what makes me happy and what I want from my life so for me ever since I was a little girl when I was you know eight years old I was watching Oprah like I'd stay home alone and watch Oprah all the time and Oprah was kind of the way that I was able to escape from the world because I saw other people going through similar emotional issues I was being bullied not feeling accepted feeling ugly not having any friends so I was watching Oprah and I've always known I've wanted to leave a legacy of some sort like you know my goal isn't to you know really it's not so much about being happy as it is about leaving a legacy it's not so much about obtaining a ton of wealth and building a palace as much as it is about leaving a legacy and eventually helping and empowering other people I have found that empowering other people is something that makes me so happy it brings me so much joy to see how I can change other people's lives and I really do believe why selfishly why I like feeling like I'm helping other people and I think it's because when I was younger again I was bullied nobody paid attention to me nobody thought I was important I think if I can prove to other people that I am important and that I am valued and that I can impact millions of people's lives then I will feel whole again and I will feel accepted in the world again you know I think part of it has to do really with that and so my goal and I'm gonna manifest it it can come true in a variety of forms but I do believe if you don't manifest something you're only doing yourself a disservice so my goal is really to make banish the number one and the only at home acne scarring treatment and make it big make it like proactive big make banish and the new banish a household name and a household product where you know you call kleenex facial tissues well you're going to call banisher this product it's going to be the product for acne scars just like proactive was the product for acne banish is the product for acne scarring but more so than that i would like to create a movement and i would love to have a talk show or some kind of media channel where we can really talk about confidence and we can talk about spirituality and finding our own strength within ourselves and teaching people how to be more confident and empowering people kind of like what Oprah has done so I'm envisioning like our team of warriors would go on tour like going on tour and traveling all over the world talking to young men and women who are struggling with their own symptoms of you know not feeling good enough of not feeling worthy of being depressed or bullied and teaching them and inspiring them at, that it's okay not to be perfect and it's okay not to be like other people and teaching other people how to be the best version of themselves even if it's not what other people are expecting of them right so that's my dream um, for the near future in terms of banish and that would make me very very happy because not only are we selling an amazing product I fully believe in but we are also changing people's lives by helping them heal internally, whatever that is. But I think moreover, like in the future of my life, when I become 60 years old and when I'm starting to think of how I'm exactly going to leave a legacy, you know, this is my plan. I would love to empower people in other countries, in developing nations, in war torn nations. I have a really strong soft spot for um, women, women and children. I have always had, I think, you know, being a woman is so hard these days, especially, you know, a woman who doesn't even have rights or is seen as property in other, you know, countries' governments. And I would love to teach women how to start their own businesses or, you know, teach them the skills of entrepreneurship so they don't have to work in certain, you know, terrible industries and they can support their families, but not only their families, they can support other women and their families by creating jobs for other women. So the thing I love about entrepreneurship is that you're not just helping yourself, 
by being financially independent, but you're also helping a community of other people by providing jobs, which are feeding their families and giving them access. Um, and so I would love to do that for women in developing nations. I would love to give women access to education and teach them how to read, write, math, problem solve in other countries so that way they can develop skills that are marketable for the labor market. Because I think if you're not going to educate people from the ground up and empower them, then they cannot um, move out and educate and empower other people beneath them. So for me, it's all about what can I do to teach these people the skills and give them the confidence so that they can help everybody else around them, right? Because I can't do everything one-on-one -on -one with everyone. I teach and then they teach and then they teach and then the whole community changes and transforms. And so I would love to build schools and I would love to, you know, um, travel um, to these countries and really see the impact that I will be giving these people in their communities. And that's, again, something that is important to me because I wanna feel like I can make a difference because I'm, I'm always seeking, I'm always seeking for that feeling of feeling important. And um, when I'm 60 years old, maybe I wanna, I wanna, I wanna live on like a really large, like property with a lot of grass and I want to have like you know 50 shelter dogs or I don't even know if they allow you to do that but having a ton of shelter animals and having them live like on the grass or having a little barn with all the animals and then you know just seeing them grow and develop and you know rescue them from wherever they are because I do know that a lot of rescue animals they don't end up being adopted they end up being um uh, euthanized and so just bringing all those animals that I can on you know a ton of a ton of land and then I'd also love to adopt a ton of children I don't know what the law is but I would love to adopt like 20 30 kids like Angelina Jolie style not quite Angelina Jolie style but just you know adopt a bunch of kids from all over the world and have a huge long table um, so we could have 30 kids for dinner of course I would have a lot of help like I would have like you know people like a chef um, and you know cleaners and stuff like that so I could help manage that lifestyle but I would love to have a big big family of animals and kids and just really help and empower other people however best I can so that is why I need to make a lot of money with Banish right now so that way I can use those funds into my future goals and leave a legacy for the world because I know for me I'm gonna die one day and you are going to die one day too I'm sorry to break the news to you but what can I do on this earth? What can I do with this one precious life? What can I do with all the experiences that I've gone through and the feelings that I felt? How can I, how can I leave a legacy where it will help other people and thereby have them help other people and other people and other people? Like how can I leave a legacy forever? And maybe it's a selfish notion and a selfish mission because at the end of the day, it's for me. At the end of the day, it's for me to feel important that when I lay down to sleep and my final breaths, I will feel very, very important, like I've mattered in the world. But who's to say that that isn't a good reason to do that, right? And so now that I've kind of gotten over this fact that, hey, I need to achieve X, Y, and Z in order to feel A, B, and C, um, I no longer feel this strong need to make a certain amount of money, be a certain weight or look a certain way or um, you know have a certain amount of followers or whatever. Like I don't feel that stress that I once had um, before I was very, very clear on my mission and my vision for my life. Now I know that whatever I do, it's going to fall into this vision I have manifested and told you guys about that even if it doesn't come perfectly even if it doesn't come the way that I would like it that I am working on a path and that everything that I'm doing is helping other people and that what I'm doing and what makes me happy is providing a legacy and empowering other people so again I went from trying to achieve these things because I thought it would make me happy and now I know that the path that I'm walking on is going to make me happy because it will allow me to leave a legacy and feel important. So I really wanted to share that about myself and just kind of the wisdom um, that I have I've been able to clutter through and pull out for the past few months because it really got me kind of sad not really knowing and having direction in my life of exactly what I wanted from my life and you know you look at these goals and you might think daisy this is too lofty daisy this is this is just crazy like your goals are way too big 
but what's wrong about that? You know, like what's wrong with, with having big goals? This is my life. I want to impact as many people as I can before, before it's my time to go. So thank you all so much for watching. I shared a very, very vulnerable part um, of myself to you guys because you know, it is the vision for my life. And when you share the vision for your life, there's always a probability that it might not come out the way, the way that you imagined or the, the way that you would tell people. But I have full faith that as long as I stick to my vision, my values, whatever happens will be amazing. And I will feel important from doing that. So let me know in the comments below what your mission and purpose in life is. And I really hope that we can Every day remind ourselves our mission and vision because before you know it, life goes by so, so fast. Thank you all so much.